Today we're going to talk about holiday eating tips, all right? And if you know anything about Dr. V, you know I'm not going to give you some stupid old crappy eating tips like, like uh, uh, instead of using uh, cream, substitute low-fat yogurt into your sweet potato pie. My answer to that is, shit, man, don't fuck with my sweet potato pie. I've been waiting all year long for sweet potato pie. I don't want yogurt in my sweet potato pie. I want the cream. Y'all agree, right? So those little tips, while they sound cute, and you're probably watching it on TV and stuff, and these cooking channels are showing you how to substitute, make healthy substitutions, I say forget that crap, right? Um, I'm going to give you some better tips than that. Okay, ready? Let's do this. Okay, so holiday eating tips. The first thing I want you to do, um, everyone always focuses on food. What should I avoid, right? So foods to avoid is the number one everyone always gives you that tip you need to avoid pecan pie because it's made with syrup and and a cheesecake has got a thousand calories per slice well you know if you've been waiting all year to eat your sweet potato pie like have some sweet potato pie it's no big deal so i'm going to tell you don't worry about the food because everybody's going to tell you about the food and that shit just drives you crazy right everybody's watching you you've had weight loss surgery people are like let's see what aunt mary's eating like there's a food police so what you're going to do is like hey i'm not going to worry about my food choices but here's the tip i want you to focus on this instead this don't i'm gonna write that really fat really really large there don't drink your calories Boom! right don't drink your calories here's the problem everyone's so worried about food but they don't think about the drinks is that true you all agree with that now some of y'all know well you know there's soda diet soda. everybody brings soda so you got a bunch of sodas right so everybody knows no sodas right but the thing i want to warn you about is alcohol so what happens is a lot of times we're celebrating you have one glass of wine two glasses of wine etc you've got some calories there you got mixed drinks you're in a social situation you're having a business retreat or business work or christmas party from your job but the alcohol starts flowing Guess what happens? What happens when your alcohol starts flowing? Decreased inhibition, which then leads to what? Eating, right? So bad, poor food choices. So even though you started the day thinking, hey, I'm gonna avoid, I'm gonna avoid that junk food, once you start drinking, it leads to making poor food choices later. Is that true? Amen? I mean, it's totally true. So instead of focusing on the food, which is what most people will tell you, I'm telling you to take it back another step. You can have all the willpower and intention you want, but the second you start drinking too much, and it can be alcohol, beer, whatever, you're going to lose that inhibition. There goes all of your intent and your willpower. Dr. Vong, my willpower didn't last. Well, shit, you shouldn't have gotten drunk, right? Now, some of y'all watching this going, that's a good point, Dr. V, but I don't drink alcohol. Well... I got news for you. There are calories in hot chocolate. Right? There are calories in uh, eggnog. Right? And eggnog can be with or without alcohol. But eggnog is really high in calories. Hot chocolate's really high in calories. Right? And you're gonna and none of that's gonna stop. Your your bypass won't stop it, your sleeve won't stop liquid. Uh, calories right so instead of focusing on foods to avoid you need to focus on uh, don't drink your calories in whatever form that's tempting to you right so really stick to water you need more water anyway right because a lot of you guys are doing turkey trots you're doing walks 5ks etc you really want to focus on your water try to avoid um, drinking your calories okay Tip number two. In fact, if you think about it, this is probably the only actual food tip I'm going to give you. 
because it's the only one that makes sense, right? Everything else you already kind of know about. You already know to put veggies on your plate. You know to focus on your protein first. You know that salads are gonna be healthier than cornbread stuffing, giblet gravy, you know, pecan pie. So that's stuff you already know. But I'm trying to prepare you for the pitfalls, right? You can know all that stuff, but if you drink too much alcohol, you're gonna lose that willpower and that inhibition, and you're gonna blow it. So, number two tip, therefore, is gonna be this. What is your goal? What is your goal for the holidays? A lot of people go into the holidays hoping to not regain weight, to not gain weight, to not, I'm hoping I don't overdo it. I'm telling you, write this down, hope. Someone write this in the comments for me, right? Hope is a four letter word, is a four letter word. Man, in my world, hope is a bad word. I don't hope, I don't want you to hope. I don't want my patients to hope. Hope is like, oh, it's out of my control. I sure hope this works out. I sure hope someone comes along and helps me. I sure hope Dr. Vong does a broadcast on this. Like, listen, you don't need a hope, right? A better four letter word is plan. Yeah, baby, okay? So you're gonna change your hope to a plan. Now, if you have a plan, you're much better off, okay? So the first, every plan has to start with this. What's the outcome? What outcome are you hoping to achieve? Hoping, there it is there. Are you wanting to achieve, right? So start with a goal. So if your goal is to maintain, that's easy. Your goal is to like, screw it, I'm gonna celebrate. I'm gonna gain weight, I'll start over in July. I'm in January, whatever, you know? You don't really care. That's, that's okay, that's all right. No one said you have to lose weight during the holidays. That's someone else's goal, by the way, in case you're wondering, so listen to me. You, you, you know, most of the people watching me have had weight loss surgery or an obesity patient, something like that. Somewhere in your head, someone told you that it was a good goal to lose weight during the holidays. You should try, stay on track, don't give up. Like, this is hard. Dr. Fong is a skinny ass Asian. I will probably gain a couple of pounds. It's okay, I don't wanna lose weight during the holidays, that's not my goal, okay? Now, we're gonna get to something more serious. Right now, what we're gonna do is, I wanna, um, I want you to think about this, okay? Why do we celebrate the holidays? So why do you celebrate the holidays? Now I told you, now I told you that um, I'm in a mood. The holidays always put me in a mood and then you're gonna understand why when we get to this, okay? Why are we celebrating the holidays? Now what I'm gonna do is um, take a quick break and I'm gonna look I'm gonna read on the laptop some of your answers. I want you to tell me why you're celebrating the holidays, okay? Now, if you're watching this, we're about to get to the meat of the top, because all this stuff is fluff shit, right? You get this, right? I mean, you don't tune in to Dr. V to watch me tell you how to substitute yogurt for sour cream or for cream, right? Like, we're gonna to get to some deep stuff right now. So, tell me, why why do you celebrate the holidays, okay? Gina, everybody, a lot of people, Jolene family, Gina Marcio family, Heather Reeves to be with family, thank you for having me, Marie Arazzo family, I want more people here. Uh, and Anna Walker says family, um, family tradition, Sabrina, welcome on girl. Kara Kelly, celebrate family, see, Everyone says family, 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 family. I'm seeing a bunch of family, tradition, right? Family. Um, so, I got news for you. All of y'all hate your fucking family. <laughs> At some point, today or tomorrow, somebody's gonna go, oh my God, I can't believe I have to go to Aunt Marge's. Like, I don't wanna go to another house. I don't want it anymore. And then some of y'all, your family's gonna get together, and I promise you there's gonna be an argument, amen? Somebody's gonna get pissed off. Somebody's gonna be mad that the Cowboys lost or the Cowboys won. Somebody's gonna be uh, hitting on the sister-in-law. Somebody's, some shit's gonna happen. 
and somebody's gonna get stabbed, somebody's gonna end up in the emergency room, right? So, <laughs> I got news for you, it's not for family, right? Hey Miguel, welcome on in, all right. So, <laughs> Angie says for the food, because it makes stores money. Shannon, thank you for sharing. Food, food, food. So you guys, see, holiday stresses me out. Now, Marcy is telling me some truth there. All right, so let's get back with the talk, okay? Let me give you some real shit, okay? Let's say you're 40 years old, middle age, 40, 50 years old, okay? This is something very important for you to understand. And you say, <clears throat> Dr. Vaughn, I have, you know, 40 more years to celebrate. With my family. We have family traditions. I have 40 more years. Let's say every time around the holidays, you go on a fishing trip with your friends or your family, you get it? Or you guys rent a big cabin in the woods or you do something, right? And you say, I have 40 more years. No, no, no. Bill Bailey says, you have 40 more times. Someone write that down. It's not years, it's 40 more times. If you meet up once a year, if you do a fishing trip once a year, you don't have 40 more years. You only have 40 more times. If you're 60 years old, you may only have 20 more times to go on that fishing trip. Now when you get down to how many times you've got left, now that brings it right down to it. Y'all get me, right? So you gotta get straight in your head. You don't have 40 more years. You only have 40 more times to get together as a family. Now if you're watching me and you're 65 years old, you might only have 15 more times or 10 more good times, right? I mean, if you're getting to the point where you shouldn't be driving, you might not be able to travel. You might be down to two or three more times. Now, when you take years out of the equation and do it to times, now that starts to spur you. Why am I telling you this? It's because some of y'all watching here going, yeah, you're Dr. Vaughn, plan, that's cute. Yeah, yeah, I'll plan it. But if you don't understand how important the plan is because you're running out of time. Y'all got me? So the holidays are coming around. And it's, they're here now. Now, how many of y'all plan for the holidays? Nobody does, right? Even though you know Thanksgiving was coming. Nobody really plans for it. You guys are scrambling since yesterday, trying to grocery store, get, you know, get the food. No one planned for it, right? And now you're trying to throw on top of that weight loss, healthy recipes, people telling you you're supposed to lose weight or trying to eat healthy, that maybe you just had weight loss surgery this year. And this is the first time that you're getting together with your family and they're all gonna be watching you. They're gonna be like, oh, should she be eating that much? Are those good? Those are a lot of empty carbs. What's your plan on how to deal with that, right? Do you even wanna deal with that? Maybe this year you don't go. Maybe you're like, you know what, Dr. Vong is right. We always get into an argument over Scrabble. <laughs> Maybe we don't wanna go this year. Maybe we wanna be calm and quiet at home. What's important to me? because I got it down to the number of times left I want to spend. Now, why am I telling you this? See, here's the problem. When I ask you guys, pay attention now, watch me. When I ask you guys, why do you celebrate the holidays? A lot of y'all said, because it's family, family tradition, we're getting together. Well, let me tell you something. If that's true, if your family was so stinking important, why do you relegate the family to one week? one holiday or maybe two holidays out of the year. If family is so important, why isn't the entire year about your family? Because here's my answer, because it's not about family, right? It's not about family. Because if it was about the family, you guys would be together all the time. You need to understand that, okay? Now, what's it about then? If it's not about the family, if it's not about the food, if it's not about making memories, it's not about, then what is it, Dr. Vaughn? Okay. I told you I was in a mood. Here it comes. The reason why we celebrate the holidays and we get together and we make a big production and it's always mom's house or grandmother's mother's house and there's always so much food right? You always have leftovers. You always pushing food people take home. The reason why we make such a big production and scene out of the holidays is this.
It's about relevance and significance. That's it. We, all, we make a big production out of this because we're seeking relevance and we're seeking significance in our life and our meanings and why we exist. We want to, we want to go all out. We want people to say, oh my gosh, grandma, what a great spread. What a great joyous occasion. Thank you so much. And in that small way for that day, even though we're exhausted, we feel like we mattered. <laughs> Does that make sense to you? We feel like the family came together for me and I mattered, right? And the reason why I'm telling you this is because when you take this to how many times left can you do this for, you start to understand that there's a finality. There's a limit to our existence, how much we can do, how much we can become. And, and it's so urgent and pressing. And, if, and that's why the holidays seem like it's become such a huge burden almost right we have to do it bigger this year the presents have to be more no one ever does less <laughs> for christmas no one ever has fewer presents unless you're in financial problems but what we're ultimately seeking is this relevance we want to know that we matter we want to know that we gathered and someone took the time to slow down and ask us hey how was your year what's happening in your life it's not so much the family, because it could be a total stranger. You could be alone at a bar on Thanksgiving and a stranger comes up and says, hey, how are you? Happy Thanksgiving, what do you do? What's your name? And automatically you feel that significance. But when I was in college one year, I didn't go home for Thanksgiving and I didn't realize that everybody goes home for Thanksgiving. So for Thanksgiving dinner, I went to Luby's, <laughs> which is a cafeteria place and I had a turkey dinner by myself and I was like there was only like five people in the restaurant and I sat at a table by myself and I was so freaking lonely and I said I would never miss the holidays again I would go home to be with my dad now that's also true for people who have family and they go to a big gathering there's always someone in that gathering that's sitting in the corner, that's sitting in the chair by themselves, that's reclusive, that doesn't want to talk to people. And even though they're surrounded by a bunch of family who love them, they still feel alone. Is that true? You know that's true. Today, when you guys start going out to see your families, look around the room. There is one person who is re, you know, withdrawn, they're sitting in the corner, they're eating by themselves. They are alone in a crowded room. If you want to make their day, go up to them, talk to them, pay attention to them, make it about them. Hey, how, how are you? I'm here, I'm here for you, I'm listening to you. I'm not worried about the football game. I'm not worried about getting the dinner ready. I'm not worried about helping out. I'm here for you. You want to make them feel relevant and significant. And if we can take, I'm telling y'all, if, if all of y'all watching me right now, if we turn the focus of the holidays from gifts and food and junk and family, quite honestly, and we started making it about relevance, and significance and understanding that that's what everybody really wants then our world will change I promise you our world will change and food will not be such a big deal eating will not be such a big deal it's ultimately that's all we want in our lives everybody watching me everybody within the sound of my voice the number one thing you want in your life is to feel significant, to feel like you matter, to feel relevant, to feel like people notice you or that you make a difference. So I hope you don't lose that message during the holidays. I'm in a mood. I'm sorry. I'm crying. All right. Dr. V loves you very much. And it's very true for me. I want to be significant. 
you're watching me, you're sharing this broadcast, makes me feel like what I do is worthwhile. And beyond just being a surgeon, but reaching a bigger platform, it just, it's my reason for being, you know? And if you can get to the core of that, your obesity is not an issue. You're overweight, you struggle with your weight. The reason why you struggle with your weight, it's because you feel insignificant on some level. And I'm here to help you change that, okay? Hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Thank you guys so much. Happy holidays, everybody. And uh, I hope you keep following, keep watching. Thank you guys very much. Cool? Let's take some questions. Woo! Man, All right. 